Wow. morning internet is quarter past eight in the morning and welcome back to the channel so in the last couple of videos i showed you some of the lowest part of the netherlands so i think it's only appropriate that today i will take you to the highest point in the netherlands so this is where i've been riding in the previous videos but today i'm taking you all the way down here to this area which is part of the province limburg and from here to uh, all the way here limburg is about 200 kilometers so because it's already 200 kilometers just to get there i'm just going to take the highway uh, the first bit and then i'm going to explore uh, some of the back roads of limburg so let's go the last uh, turn off and uh, and now I'm in Germany here Fals Netherlands that's where I was trying to go to here one kilometer the Netherlands Niederlande it was a uh, tiny unexpected unplanned detour <laughs> through Germany So, but besides the highest point in the Netherlands, this is actually the border with three countries. So I am now practically walking on the border between Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. So it's a three country border over here. So that means that now I am walking actually in Germany. And it's interesting because a hundred years ago, this was actually a four country border point. Because after the fall of Napoleon in 1815, all the borders in Europe had to be redetermined. And the Netherlands and Germany were fighting over a part with an important zinc mine. And both got part of it, but the remainder became, became an independent mini-state of only 11 kilometers big. And that existed for 100 years under the name Neutral Morsnet. And then later, after World War I, this part became part of Belgium. So now there's only three borders remaining. The Netherlands, Germany and Belgium. So this is the exact point. So now I'm in the Netherlands. Now I'm in Germany and Belgium. All right, that was that. So some of you already know that I studied geology and uh, during my degree we also came here uh, to this part of the Netherlands for doing some field work and some studies uh, because there are some uh, interesting geology uh, to find down here. So the rest of today's ride I am going to try to show you some of that uh, geology and uh, what's so interesting about this place. So uh, let's go.
over there for now because here I am not allowed to uh, to ride so it's about a 600 meter walk and then uh, hopefully I can show you something cool this is what I want So all the rock in this area, including what's been mined here in this quarry, is limestone. And this limestone is basically built up by the skeletons of billions and billions of marine organisms. Um, because 70 million years ago, this was all tropical sea. And that's when uh, all these limestones were deposited. And so in this area, you see a open pit, but they've been mining these limestones in this area everywhere and there are more than 250 tunnels so most of the mining has been done underground these 250 tunnels all together and the limestone that you see here is basically the same type of rock that you find at the white cliffs of dover in england and they've been mining these limestones for 800 years and all of this rock has been used to build all the castles and houses monasteries churches all of those buildings that are built in this area were made from uh, these white limestones. All right, now you've seen the open pit, but I am also going to take you underground through the tunnels. But before I do that, I'm first going to ride through uh, Maastricht a little bit, and then we go underground. Maastricht. This is the famous hell port. So since today you're allowed again to sit outside in, in cafes and bars, you wouldn't think that uh, we're still in a corona crisis if you see all of this. This is such a cool city and Maastricht is also the home of world famous violin player André Rieu, he is from here. So this is one of the entrances, uh, one of the many of them, I believe all of them are closed down. But it looks like somebody actually lives here because... Oh. <laughs> so it looks like I'm actually standing in front of somebody's house. So over time these tunnels and caves have served several purposes. People have been living in there. People have been hiding in there during the World War II, but also criminals are known to have been hiding in the tunnels. Um, but now most of them are close to the public, um, so I cannot just enter any of them. Not over here at least. See, this is all... It's a cave house. So people were just living inside this this cave dug out from the from the mountain here, from the rock. So there are several of these cave houses which are just dug out of, uh, of the rock here. Super cool. And these were inhabited until 1931. Somewhere here I can go underground. Dan mag je 
these are not real caves. Uh, these are, it's an old mining system. As we can see here, this is a man who is preparing a saw to cut the rocks from the walls. They started to remove these blocks of rocks uh, in the 13th century. And with these rocks, they built the city of Maastricht. This man here, Solomon, uh, came here on December 10, 1941. He was on the run for the Germans. Uh, he was a, a Jew. Mm -hmm. And so he used the system to uh, reach Belgium. 20 November 1981, the same man, Solomon, came back 40 years later because he made it to oh. Belgium. He survived the Second World War and came back to Maastricht. And then he asked a local guy to take him down here. They looked up for the first inscription from 1941. And then oh, he wrote wow. another one 40 years later, in 1981. Oh. This is the map of the system. It's a maze of about 20,000 corridors. If you all add them together, that's about 200 kilometers. When I started to use the machines to dig out the mountain about eight years ago, they removed this part of the system. So everything that's beyond this red line, this part, this is gone. This is the open air quarry that you can visit about two kilometers on this side. Here we're on the deepest part of the old system. We're about 40 meters under the top of the, the mountain. You can see the ceiling is very high here. Yeah. Especially the guards from the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Yeah. They were very scared that they would never see the collection again if we leave the country. And so they suggested to the Nazis to bring all this art here in the St. Peter's Mountain, mm -hmm. stating that here we are 40 meters under the ground. If there would be any bombings on the top of the mountain, there is nothing happening down here. Yeah. So the art works would be safe here. Problem is yeah. high humidity, 90% of humidity in the air, 11 degrees. This is not good for the paintings. Exactly. So the Nazis told the Dutch guards from the Rijks Museum, all right, you can take all the arts to Maastricht, but you have to make sure that they will be stored in the best conditions. Mm -hmm. And so the Dutch guard came here to Maastricht, yeah. and they built a very big vault, which oh. is right here. <gasps> this is uh, one of the official storage places here in the caves. so that the weight will not never be on the same spot. So every day, turn it a bit wrong. And that for three years. They unrolled it in Amsterdam. It was very scary because they didn't know yeah. how it would look like. Yeah. And there was nothing wrong with it. It was in perfect condition. Wow. And that's because also this air conditioning system, you can see here, the temperature was high here. Yeah. Yeah. And so they had the best condition to keep all these paintings. See, in Maastricht, sometimes we have earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And if there is an earthquake and the mountain moves together mm -hmm. with the earthquake, uh, who's going to be the first one to go inside the caves? <laughs> and this is why they have this needles here to measure if there is any small light difference change into these measures, mm -hmm. then they know it's not safe to come uh, down here anymore. All right, and I am back with Lima. Wow, that was such a fascinating tour. I, I didn't expect it at all, but I thought it was so super interesting. And I learned so much 
yeah, things that I didn't know, especially the vault with all the paintings and the fact that the night night watch had been laying there for three years. Uh, yeah, just amazing story. So I'm super happy that I came here uh, and uh, yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this tour. I thought it was super, super cool. So yeah, overall it was a nice day. It was lovely, lovely weather, beautiful ride. Uh, I, I hardly ever come in this part of the Netherlands. I'm usually always in kind of the western part. It was just really nice to be here today. So I really enjoyed it. I hope you liked it too. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And then I'll see you in the next video.